Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here, and welcome to Tribes of Midgard. If this is the first time you're seeing this game, then this is a Viking-inspired cooperative survival game where you can either go in alone, or you can join up to nine friends to form a party of ten to survive and defend your village from a whole manner of dangers ranging from hell things that come out at night, all the way up to the colossal Jotnar, who will quite literally destroy everything you've been working hard for. And if you think the reason I'm playing this game is because there are beards, you are most definitely right. Although I will say, the beards, given that it's a Viking game, are nowhere near as long as they should be. But regardless, that to one side. The game itself is pretty unforgiving, but also a lot of fun. And today I want to put together a few handy tips for those of you that are getting started, since when you first drop into the world, and there's a million and one things to collect, build, upgrade and defend against, it can be a little daunting. So here are 10 handy tips to get you started. I also want to thank Gearbox for very kindly sponsoring this video and giving us a chance to go hands on early and test out the game. Now let's begin. Firstly, in at number one, where do you start? Well, when you begin a new saga, you're going to drop into the world in your pants. Not very dignified, I know, but what can you do? At this point, your very first priority should be to gather some basic materials so you can make some tools. Without tools, you'll need to start just by gathering sticks and stone from around the ground, so you're pretty limited, but thankfully you don't need too much. If you start by gathering 5 branches and 3 flint, this will give you enough to craft both a lumber axe and a pickaxe from the tinkerer. And with these, you'll then be able to mine for ore and chop down trees, which is important if you want to craft anything meaningful. Following that, I then recommend getting a basic weapon and some armor first, which you can do from the smithy and the armorer, but for that you're going to need some iron, some wood, some stone and some leather. Most of which you can get with your fancy new tools, chop down trees, mine ore nodes, and once you have a sword, you can defeat animals and creatures for leather. Getting kitted out doesn't take too long, but it should be your first priority, since without it, you're going to be pretty useless. Next up, in number 2, check the challenges and the rewards on the main menu. I'm going to be honest with you, your first run in this game probably isn't going to go very well. You're going to be caught off guard, find you don't have enough materials, and before you know it, the Yorknar will be at your doorstep tearing down the tree of Yggdrasil. But thankfully, even if you lose, you earn some XP that persists outside of the game and this will be useful. See, when you level up and you check the reward tab, you have this reward track where you can unlock various things. But the very first thing at level 2 is the Harvester Starter Kit. With this unlocked, you'll be able to equip it at the character screen and then straight away you can begin your next saga with some simple tools, meaning you can cut trees and mine ore from the get-go. Additionally, if you crafted an item, you will have also completed the Common Crafter Challenge. Checking the Challenge tab, you'll see that there are things that you can complete, and this one gives you a Village Starter Kit. This will instead see you begin the game with a basic set of armor and a basic weapon and shield, so once again, you can begin without having to spend the first 5-10 to 10 minutes gearing up, which in the long run can help you out. So keep an eye on these in between games since you'll unlock stuff as you go. Now jumping back into the game, let's talk about souls, arguably one of your most important if not the most important resource in the game. They're used for practically everything. In the middle of your village is the tree of Yggdrasil. If this dies, you die. So at the very basic level, you can pile souls into this to give it more life. If you see the pool go a yellowy colour, you might want to top it up so that it goes blue, and you can keep track of the tree's health in the top right hand corner. However, don't go spending all of them in your tree, since you'll also need souls to upgrade your village, build your defences, repair weapons and equipment, and level up your vendors. Thankfully, souls come from pretty much everything you do. Fighting enemies, collecting resources, chopping down trees, mining, opening chests at bandit camps. So essentially, make sure that you're gathering on the way to anywhere and everywhere you go, as you'll accumulate these pretty rapidly. However, make sure you protect them too, since if you die in this game, any items you're carrying, like resources, will be sealed in a chest for you to go back and collect when you respawn, which is pretty handy, but that does not apply to souls. If you die, those are gone. So if you've been banking souls for a big upgrade, and you get a little greedy and you die, then you've just thrown a potential village upgrade or vendor improvement down the drain. One final thing that is very important to remember is that in order to repair your weapons you will also need souls. So it's handy to keep a bank of these because as you're playing throughout the game you will break your weapons, they will need repairing and while they will also need materials they will also need souls. So make sure you don't spend all of them on everything because otherwise if you're in a position where you need to fight and you have no weapons it's going to be pretty difficult. But do remember you can fast travel back to base so if you're carrying a lot return and use them before you lose them. Then in number 4, as you go out and gather more materials and more souls, one of the other important things to invest in is your village facilities. Upgrading the smithy will allow you to craft better weapons, 
the Armourer, better gear, the Tinkerer, better tools, and the Trapper, better potions. These will all become incredibly useful later on, especially the gear when it comes to fighting the Jordanar. So use those souls and upgrade your village. Additionally, as you progress through your saga, your hero will level up and you'll unlock Blessing Points. Blessing Points are essentially skill points that can be spent in the different class archetypes. You start your journey with no class, but then once you level up, you can pick a specialization. To begin with, you'll have access to either the Ranger or the Warrior, but later you'll unlock more. Specking into these will allow you to unlock powerful abilities, which again will turn the tide in battle. The Ranger is a great place to start, the bow is a good weapon for picking people off from afar, and the Ranger even has movement speed skills which is handy for getting around. Then next up, one of the major threats in the game are of course the Jordnar, the giants that will come to destroy the Tree of Yggdrasil. As you progress through your saga, eventually this red icon will appear near your minimap. This means the Jordnar is somewhere on the map, slowly making their way to your village. When you first see it, you have plenty of time, but I would highly recommend going out to try and scout for their location because if you ignore them until they're at your gates, it's basically going to be game over. They have a ton of health, they hit like a truck, and they will require a lot of effort to take down. So heading out early to scope them out and chip away at some of their health is a good strategy. They don't regenerate health, so you can head out, do some damage, go back to base, upgrade some gear, repair and go out again, but having intel on their whereabouts is an absolute game changer. Following on from there, as you're playing throughout your saga, keep an eye on the quest board. Since you'll be venturing out into the world to gather and explore anyway, you might as well pick up some quests. Completing these will reward you with items, even weapons, so it's a good way to make further progress simultaneously. Additionally, if you're playing online with friends, make sure you're using the war chest. It's located here, in the village, and this is your deposit that allows you to share materials. Sure, you can just go into your inventory and drop items for your teammates to use, but if you are regularly gathering, then heading back and dropping off sticks, wood, ore and more just means that when your team return, there's a steady deposit of items that they can use should they need to craft, upgrade, repair or improve anything. While it might not seem as glamorous as spending souls to upgrade your vendors so you can buy cool stuff, Upgrading your village defences is incredibly important. Having gates you can close will stop hell things from walking in during the night and will slow them down massively. Having archer towers will help with anything that makes it to your gates, and in general having a line of defence between the enemies and your tree is going to be key to your survival. And much like vendors and gear, these walls and defences can also be upgraded, so continue to spend souls to make them stronger. And then finally, explore. It's a survival game, and the good materials aren't just going to be found at your gates. You have to venture further out, but keep in mind, the further you go, the stronger the enemies are, and the greater the challenge. But the greater the challenge, the greater the reward. There are camps you can raid, materials to mine and gather, enemies to kill, all of whom will drop items that can be used to craft better stuff. So head out and see what the world has to offer. Along your way, you'll find many fast travel stations. I highly recommend activating these because then of course, as you go further, as you get wounded and you need to return, it'll allow you to get back to that location a lot easier without having to just trek from your village. But that my friends, is pretty much it. Those are some tips to get you started. There is more to the game. In fact, if you happen to see a bridge that looks a little something like this, something you need to repair with special materials, this will actually lead you to a special lair where you can fight the world bosses. However, it's important to learn to walk before you can run. So learn to survive, learn to gather, learn to defeat the immediate threats, and then you can venture further. Hopefully you guys have found these tips helpful, and of course, good luck in the world of Midgard. If you want to catch more from us at Arex Gaming, don't forget you can catch the guys 269 and Paradise Central streaming over on Twitch weekdays, playing a variety of games. If you guys want to jump in, tune in, watch, and even join in, then make sure you check them out. The links to those are in the description box down below. And of course, you can join the Discord to get involved in all of the discussions.